pillow talk. Wakening, he turned his head and saw she was still reading. After a moment, he said, About that email you sent? I never sent you an email, she said, eyes still in the book. Not before today, perhaps. But this afternoon you emailed me and said, I repeat, she interrupted, looking hard at him, I have never sent you or anyone else an email in my life. But you did send one to the office this afternoon. I remember it perfectly. The heading stating it was from you to me and everyone else in the firm. Why did you have to tell them? You must have sent it from a friend's computer or one in the public library. You're still drunk. If you mean I was drunk when we came to bed, you are wrong. We had only one bottle of wine with the evening meal, and I drank only one more glass of it than you. I'm glad you're sorry you sent that message, but you'll never persuade me you didn't. You're hallucinating. What am I supposed to have said? That you want to leave me. Five words. I want to leave you. Just that. She stared at him, shut the book and said bitterly, Very clever. Cruel, but clever. Do you want to leave me? Yes, but I never told you so. I've never told anyone that. They think ours is such a solid marriage. You must have noticed it's a farce, and this is your bloody cunning way of blaming me for something I never said and was never going to say. Weathers, he cried, I am never cunning, never cruel. I remember these words coming up very clear and distinct on the computer screen. I want to leave you. Then why didn't you mention it when you came home? Why didn't you mention it over dinner? Are you going to pretend you were brooding over it before we came to bed? He thought hard for a while, then said, You're right. I must have dreamed it before I woke up a moment ago. I'm glad you've sobered up, she said, and resumed reading. After, after a while, he said, But you want to leave me? And she sighed and said nothing. When will you do it? I don't suppose I'll ever do it, she murmured, still appearing to read. I haven't the courage to live alone. You're an alcoholic bore, but not violent, and I'm too old to find anyone better. I'm glad, he said loudly. I don't want you ever to leave, because I love you. My life will be a misery if you leave me. Then you're luckier than I am. Go back to sleep. He turned away from her and tried to sleep. About half an hour later, he heard her shut the book and switch off the bedside lamp. He got up and went to a room next door where he had hidden a bottle of whiskey for this sort of emergency. Oh, sorry, what a horrible story. 